In this video, we're going to talk about some examples that are going to use bearing and this whole idea of direction angles and resolving a vector into its components. So imagine there's a plane flying and it has a bearing of 65 degrees and that plane is flying at 500 miles per hour. And so what we want to be able to do is to find the component form of the velocity vector. So let's talk for a minute about the difference between a bearing and what we've talked about, our direction angle. So a bearing always goes clockwise from due north. So the idea is you, when you have a compass, it's going to point to due north. And so in this case, we are imagining that our plane is going to be flying at an angle that is going uh, in that clockwise direction, it's going to go 65 degrees, not 60, 65 degrees, uh, which means um, we're going to go on an angle clockwise 65 degrees. Now, the first thing we have to do anytime we have a bearing problem is we have to convert this bearing into uh, a direction angle for that vector because all of our our calculator's use of sines and cosines and so on assume or are calculated using an angle that goes from the positive x-axis. So if we have a 65 degree bearing, that's going to be 90 minus 65 is going to give us then a direction angle for our vector that's going to be 25 degrees. So the the speed is the magnitude of our velocity vector. So that's telling us that the magnitude of our vector is 500 and its direction angle is 25. So to resolve our velocity vector into its components, we are going to take its magnitude times the cosine of that direction angle, notice that we have to use, we have to convert the bearing into a direction angle or it will not be correct. And then we're going to do the velocity times the sine of 25 degrees. Then we just punch it into our calculator and I believe if we do that we should get something like 453.2 and 211.3. So there we have resolved our velocity vector. So let's do a much more complicated example. I'm going to go to a new screen here. And so we're going to now uh, calculate the effect of wind velocity on our plane. So we are going to calculate the effect of wind velocity. So uh, our flight plan, so we're going to be the pilot here, your flight plan has you leaving Laramie and flying due east. Has you leaving Laramie and flying due east. That is, that's where we want to go, is due east. Uh, there is, in Laramie, usually a little bit of a breeze. So there is a 65 mile per hour, whoops, that's a 65 mile per hour uh, breeze, a wheel called a wind, uh, with a bearing of 60 degrees. We need to find the compass heading. We, so we're going to find the compass heading we should follow. So there's one thing we're going to try to do. Then we're going to determine, we're going to have to talk about what all these different things mean. Determine. the plane's ground speed 
I'll talk about what that means here in a moment. The plane's ground speed if the plane's airspeed is 450 miles per hour. So the airspeed, uh, and I'm going to pick some colors for these. So let me just say that uh, for no particular reason, I'm going to use A to be that vector to represent airspeed. And so that has a direction and a magnitude. So airspeed is the speed of the plane with no wind. So that's just what the uh, engine, the plane, is making us do. The grounds, the wind speed, we know. So wind speed is also going to be a vector. So I'm going to call that, I'm going to use blue for that one so we can just see it. And then, uh, for no particular reason, I'm going to choose then yellow to be ground speed. And so ground speed is going to be the speed and direction after the wind has pushed us off course. Speed and direction of our plane after the wind acts on our plane. Okay, so the idea is something like this. Here's our xy axis, and we have the wind speed, so I'm going to go blue. The wind speed we know has a magnitude of 65 and a bearing of 60 degrees. So if to get the bearing, I'm going to go 60 degrees clockwise, so that's going to put us on an angle something like that. So here is our wind speed vector. And remember, I'm trying to sort of show the length uh, to indicate the, the magnitude, which is that speed. So uh, 65 compared to, we're going to get here 450 in a bit, is not going to be very small. Now that wind speed vector, we know, is going to, when we resolve it into its components, it's going to be its magnitude, which is uh, 65 times the cosine of its direction angle. Now, remember, we have seen that the bearing is 65 degrees. So, and I'm going to use this Greek letter B, which looks like a very fancy script B. That's the bearing, but that means that our direction angle down here, the theta is going to be 90 minus 25, 90 minus the 65, and so that's going to give us a 25 degree uh, reference angle. So that's going to give us a wind speed vector of 65 cosine 25 and 65 sine of 25. Now we're going to, in general, I should say, in general, the ground speed vector is going to be the airspeed, that is how fast in the direction we're going without the wind, plus, and then the wind is going to act on us. So this relationship is always true in these uh, kind of airplane problems that we will do a few of here. Now, we're, the idea is we don't know which way we want to point this airspeed. So this the airspeed is going to be just the plane with no wind. But we can see that the wind is going to push us off course. We want to eventually get to a ground speed that is going to be going due east. So this is the way we want to go. So because this uh, blue wind speed vector is going to blow us off course, we're going to have to somehow aim our plane. We're going to have to get an airspeed vector that's going to be somewhere over here in the hope that the, the parallelogram that is formed will, and I'm not doing this very well, so let me try to see if I can fix that a little bit better. So I'm trying to imagine that after we add this 
airspeed vector to that wind speed vector that the resultant, which remember is going to be that diagonal of that uh, parallelogram, is, is going to be then going due east. So that's kind of the visual of what's going on there. That's our wind speed vector plus our air speed vector is going to give us the ground speed vector. So the visual is looking something like that. Okay, so let's see what we know about the air speed vector. So the air speed vector, we know it's going to have, I believe, do we know the magnitude, I think? Or not. Yep, it's 450 miles per hour. So we don't know the direction angle. So its magnitude is going to be 450. I'm going to call this direction angle here that we're going to have to figure out is going to be theta. So I don't know what that is. So this is going to be what we get for our airspeed vector. 450, oops, that should be a cosine of theta. Let me try doing that better. So that's going to be a 450 cosine of theta and a 450 sine of theta. And we know that the ground speed vector is going to be the sum of the airspeed vector and the wind speed vector. So that's going to look like, let's see, the airspeed is going to be 450 cosine theta for its x component, plus the wind speed vector, which is 65 cosine 25. We know all that stuff. And the y component of the ground speed vector is going to be the 450 sine of theta. Sine theta we don't know. We're going to try to figure that out. Plus the 65 sine of 25 degrees from the wind speed vector. Now we do know that the ground speed vector is going to be going due east. That means that I don't know what the x component is going to be. That's what we're going to have to figure out. But I do know that the y component is going to have to be 0. And that's going to allow us to solve for theta in this problem. So because we can see that the y component here must be equal to 0, that is going to give us an equation of 450 sine theta plus 65 sine 25 must equal 0. So we can solve this for theta. I'm going to subtract that 65 sine of 25 to the other side. And then we're going to divide by the 450. So that's going to be a negative 65 sine 25 divided by the 450. And then we're going to take the inverse sine of that result. And when you punch that into your calculator, I believe we're going to get about a negative 4.14 degrees. So that's this angle theta that I have in green right here. That's that negative 4.14 degrees. Now we are trying to find, first of all, what is the compass heading going to be for our airspeed vector. So we want the compass heading. So the compass heading is going to be our bearing. So our bearing is going to, remember, go from due north, and it's going to have to go down to our angle right here. So since our angle is that 4.14 degrees, that's 4.4 degrees beyond 90. So if we add those together, that's telling us that our compass setting must be 94.14 degrees. That is, when we get in that plane, we're going to aim it at 94.14 degrees going clockwise from north, 
anticipating that our wind is going to blow us so that we'll actually go straight east. Now, we also want to know what is the plane's ground speed. So what that's asking for is how fast is it going relative to the ground. And that is speed is going to be the magnitude of that velocity vector. And remember the way you find the magnitude of a vector is we're going to go the square root of, and we're going to, it's Pythagorean, so we're going to add the x component squared plus the y component squared, and then square root that. Well, here is our ground speed vector right here, so that means we're going to go 450 cosine of theta, but remember, we figured out what that theta was just a moment ago, and I would not just use the rounded answer, but go up there and um, capture it with your calculator. So we're going to take the negative 4.14 degrees, but I, I want all the decimal places of accuracy, not the rounded answer. Notice also that we are using here, that angle is our angle that's from the x-axis, not the bearing, because that's not what we need to use here. We won't ever use the bearing in anything with a sine or a cosine. And so then we also have the plus 65 cosine of 25 degrees. All of that is our x component of our ground speed vector. We're going to square that and then add the y component. But we said earlier, because we're going due east, that y component is just zero. So this is going to go into your calculator. And I believe when I did it, what I got was 505.12. And that's going to be miles per hour. So what we're seeing is that our plane is pushing us at 450 miles per hour. We're aiming it at a negative 4.14 degrees. That is, we're actually aiming a little bit south. We're aiming our plane south of east, but we are anticipating and going to get this wind that's going to blow us off course, well, off the course we're aiming for, which will push us to the course that we want, which is due east. It's a little bit at, the wind is a little bit at our back, so it's going to increase our speed from the 450, which is how fast we'd be going with just the engines, the engine of the plane working. But because that wind is a little bit at our back, we're going to get some added speed. We're going to go a little over 505 miles per hour. All right, see what you can do now with homework 52. These are pretty challenging problems.